Okay, so before we begin, I want to uh, share a Ramam related thing that happened over Shavuos. Can't remember if I said this to any of you at any point over the Hog. I said about the fun uh, little Minhag that I did. Yeah, so uh, there, uh, the Abu Dhirim writes that there was a Minhag going way back, I guess. I don't know how early. Uh, that, you know, there are these poems called Azharot, um, which are poetical compositions which go through the 613 mitzvahs. Okay, um, and the, um, I guess there was a minhag by the time of Abu Dhiram, so I don't know if this is from the Gaonim or whatever, that on the first day of Shavuos, then people would read through the poem for all 248 positive mitzvahs, and on the second day through all 365 uh, negative mitzvahs. So, um, and I heard, you know how like, I forgot, I, we must have talked about this at some point, but the question is like, given the fact that the drusha of Rav Simlai is like the only source of Tariag mitzvahs, you know, uh, uh, yeah. So, so the question is like, how did that become such a wide, you know, like a, a widespread concept? You know, that there are six hundred thirteen. Again, we see that you know Ibn Ezra, Rabag don't hold that there are six thirteen. And if I just had that one drusha, I would also say like, okay, fine. There's you know like there's no you know it's a it's it's a midrash agada. And especially if you look at the context of that midrash, it goes through and says and you know. Yeah, they, the then the after 613, then David narrowed it down to, to, to 11, and then someone else did it to like, I don't know, 10, then 6, then 3, then 2, then 1, you know, something like that, you know. So like, if you just look, if that's all you had, you'd be like, okay, there's no nothing that should say that there's 613, you know. So apparently, according to this one uh, article that I, I read, but I don't know where it is right now, um, these Asharo poems are what popularized the notion of the count. So by the time the Ramam got on the scene, that's why he had to like fight against the the the, the mistaken counts, and that started the whole genre of like counting the mitzvahs. So in other words, it started from the poetry, not it didn't start from the halachic thing because you know as we've seen like there are many things that there are de orisa even though they're not counted as separate uh, institutions. So anyway, so I read that minhag uh, from the Abu Dhirim, and then I was I remembered that in the back of the Kafech translation of Sefer Mitzvos there is a, uh, a Rambam version of it, okay? Uh, where it's according to the Rambam's um, count. But what I didn't know is where that came from. So someone scanned this, uh, if you just search for Kafech Azhara. So Kafech has this whole little uh, story over here, which we're not gonna read, where he basically says that when he was young, then in, uh, when he was around 17 years old is when he first uh, you know, completed learning the uh, uh, Sefer Mitzvahs of the Rambam. And they had this Minhag and Taman to read these Azharos in Shul. But it pained him. What does he say? He says he says some like poor. You're like oh poor guy. He says something like, like he gave him like anguish that the version that they read uh, in shul was not the Ramam's version. You know, and he says that like he would go home and he would read it. Uh, he he would uh, he would read through the Ramam's count and it just wasn't the same. Yeah. Like, was the shul the Sfarim as opposed to the Ramam Yemenites? Um, no, I think there was no one had written a Ramam version. Uh, of the thing so like they probably got it I mean they probably did get it from from Sparty lands or from the Gonim I have no idea what the route was but oh they, they were doing the Shalom even Gavi roll one and I think he was um I think he was from Spain hold on Ibn Gavi roll hold on just one second uh and Andalusia yeah we also have Carlos from the Sparty family correct I think so yeah okay I mean like as opposed to like Bore Egyptian bread. I actually don't know. Yeah, I'm not sure. Um, anyway, so Kafa said he wanted to write uh, his own version, and even though it was, he's, he says I'm not a poet. Like, but and, and you know, anyone can like like you know take up this cause better than than, than I can. But like I, I did it. So he he wrote this rhyming, um, you know, poetic composition of the Ramam's Tariyat Mitzvos. So I, I actually read it on. Um, both days of Shavuos, and what I did is because I wanted to make sure that I was actually reviewing and not just like mindlessly reading. I went through and I read the whole Minyan and Mitzvahs also. Uh, and the way I did it was I did it in chunks. So I would do like like the first you know cluster in the Minyan and Mitzvahs, and then I would read this. And I'll give you a taste of it. Okay, he has a little intro. So, vihine ata achel v'od lo ochel vihi da ki yesh el v'hutzur hayitzurin. Right, so that's Anochi. The also Ken Yachid, the Amrahu Echad, the Ahavehu Yachad, the Holdu Hayitarin. So that's uh, Yehud Hashem and Ahav as Hashem. But also Gam Tirav, Yehe Lach Ezra, Velo Tami Tikra, Aravim Ushkarin. That's Yer Hashem and that is um, uh, Krishma. Devekim, no, that's not Krishma. Tami Tikra, that is, wait, that is, wait, I thought Krishma was. 
It sounds like Krishman, right? But I thought that that's not number six. Oh, he's it's Tfila. Okay, I don't know why it says Aravim Vashacharim, right? Especially because Aravim, well, it must be uh, afternoons and mornings, uh -huh. right? Yeah. Um, uh, even though that's not Doraisa, I don't know, whatever. Deveking bo tihiu vishim uni vichiu vishnishpaim tihiu shvus nitarim. So we cling to him. So you cling to him, that's a lehidavik bedrachav, and then a shvua. So anyway, so I read all this. It was a good review. It was fun doing the poetry thing, you know? And I do think it actually is a good thing to do. Like, you know, we spent a good, uh, I would look back at the year and we spent a good like three weeks, I think, on the Minyan and Mitzvahs last year. And we got a lot out of it. And it was very good to, to go through this again. And it reminded me of a lot of stuff and a lot of questions that I had before. And then just this morning, someone on Facebook asked, uh, you know, he said like, what's the deal with the order of the Sefer HaMitzvahs? And I was able to answer because I'd just gone through it, you know, and like you know, our basic theory was it's associative, but like I was reminded of that when I was actually going through the whole thing. And there's something different about like going through every single detail. What was that? The person's question was, the question was like, what, what is the nature of the order of the Sefer Mitzvos? Because I guess they noticed that it was different than the Mishnah Torah, you know, uh, and, uh, and this kind of reminded me of like all the surprising places where he categorizes things, you know, um, so it was, it was a good review. So I, I, I'm not saying that like, you know, you have to do this or it's the highest priority, but it's something that I think I would like, and I'm not taking it on as minhag, but like, it was definitely a good thing to do on, um, Shavuos. And there's also, a, maybe because of that, influ the, the influence of like the Lubavitcher Rebbe, uh, Hakdama that, that we read from before, there is something like that we can't replicate in any other area of like, going through Kol Torah Kula. Now, I didn't go through Kol Torah Kula, but like, how many things do we do where in like one or two sittings you get that experience? And like reading all Tariyag Mitzvos kind of like gives you that, like you, you could look at the entire system like from a bird's eye view, you know? Right. So it was, it, was, it was a fun thing to do. Anyway, so just wanted to share that. Yeah. I, I, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so what we've decided to do for today and tomorrow, at the very least, uh, I don't know if it's going to go one day after that, is Birkas Konin. Okay, and two reasons for that. Well, one is because we are, kind of need something to do for the next uh, week and a half until uh, uh, in, until summer. Uh, but also, this is in this week's parsha, and it happens to be really interesting halachos. Okay, I did not print out a packet because it's only going to be a little bit of stuff, and um, we're going to start with the Sefer Mitzvos, which you don't have there, but it's just very very short. Yeah. Is that you just have pre-prepared the new Yadish right now? Um, uh, you don't need to write this down, yeah, unless we find a, a, do a new, a completely new area. Okay, so <clears throat> mitzvahs to say chaf vav, okay, which is, uh, again, I'm just going to read this here very short. Oh, sorry, I forgot to say the other reason I wanted to read this. Another reason I wanted to do this is this is a really interesting area where the psukim are very few. Right. In fact, let's just read the Pesukim right now because there's only five of them. And the vast bulk of this is in Torah Shabal Peh. And it's also an interesting, so that makes it interesting, but there's also an interesting thing that like so much of our experience of Birkas Konim is not like reflective of what the actual mitzvah do Raisa is. Like you asked me earlier today, early, and I asked me, you said like, what's the deal with the fact that we don't do it every day, you know? Uh, and like a lot of yeah, uh, most Ashkenazim aren't even aware that it's a mitzvah do raisa for the Quran to bless Israel every day, you know? So like, like it'll be interesting for us to experience how we get from like the ideal as presented by the Ramam to where we are today, yeah. yeah. I was just curious, like what metric is five of few? And first of the drill call of the, this was like, except for, except for Avoda and Mitzvah Svalei Javos, that seems more than average. Um, maybe, I mean, it's not really five, it's really two. Uh, but um, it's really possible 20, uh, uh, 23 and 27, but um, maybe not even 27, but yeah. Um, so I, I, I retract, I'm, 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 uh, I'm wrong. Daber al Aaron vel Aaron, sorry, Daber Hashem Moshe Lemor, Daber al Aaron vel Banav Lemor. So speak to Aaron and to his sons, saying, Ko Savarho Espen Israel. Again, this is also why I want to read this. We learn a ton of halachas from the word ko. Okay, and it's weird because they're all, we'll see this. It's all uh, like uh, Torshwal Peh, but it's on the word Ko. Okay. Thus 
shall you bless the children of Israel? Amr lahem, say to them. Okay, then we got the bracha. Yivracha Hashem v'yishmeracha, may Hashem bless you and guard you. Ya'er Hashem panav elacha v'yichunecha, may Hashem illuminate his face towards you and be gracious to you. Yisa Hashem panav elacha v'yasem l'cha shalom, may Hashem lift his face towards you and, and establish peace for you. V'samu es shmi al b'nei Yisrael v'ani avarchem, and they shall place my name over the children of Israel and I will bless them. Okay, so those are the pesukim. Okay, so Sefer Mitzvos, very short. Uh, again, you know, <laughs> this is one of the ones where when the Ramam says, what is he including in the Sefer Mitzvos? He says, I'll include enough for you to know what the mitzvah refers to by name. This doesn't even seem to be providing that. Uh, the commandment that the Kohanim have been commanded with to bless Israel every day. And it says, thus shall you bless B'nai Israel, say to them. He doesn't even tell us which what the bracha is. You would think that that'd be kind of part of the saying what the mitzvah is. Yeah. Um, the is the world of, I'm not the mitzvah. <clears throat> in the Minyan Mitzvah, is the world of say, while they say something that's Bashita obvious in the Pasuk? Um, that's a good question. Because the, the actual that's text, a good question, right? Text right, that, that's true. That's true. Yeah, I, I I don't remember based on what we've done, but that would be a good explanation for why he omits it here. Whereas, let's say for example, Kriya Shema is not obvious from the Pesukim, and therefore he has to say it. All right, I accept that. Yeah, uh, like what? Yeah. Yeah. He says that in the Sefer Mitzvahs? Yeah. Interesting. Okay. All right. So then I don't know. <laughs> All right. I don't know. Back to score one. I don't know if there's any, like, Yeah. Yeah. All I, right. I mean, yeah. I, I, I guess I don't have enough data to be able to differentiate, but it's a legitimate question, though. Good approach. All right. I also never understood why the laws of Birkos Kalanim are scattered through those three Mesechas. You know, you think of anything that's in like, I don't know, Brachos, Menach, I don't know, Menachos, right? Megillah, Tainus, and Sota. Okay. All right. So now we get to the Minyan and Mitzvos. Okay. And, and this would be a good place to look at the uh, the order that's different, right? Because in, uh, well, let's let's actually reverse the process. In the um, Chalukah Sasfarim, so he puts it in Sefer Ava, which makes sense because it's a daily mitzvah that reminds you about, uh, uh, you know, to love God and remember him constantly, right? And it's daily. Okay, but then he puts it in Sefer Ava and he puts it with Hilchos Tefillah Obirkas Konim. Now that you can argue this didn't have to be one section, right? Yesh bichlal and shtei mitzvos asay. One is lavod es Hashem betfila b'chol yom, and two is lavar kohanim es Yisrael b'chol yom. Well, it's its own section at the end of it, right? Yeah. But he doesn't say hilchos birkas kohanim as a separate section. He does put it with tefila, which he didn't have to, because as we'll see, we'll, we'll see this later on in mikdash. It was not done with tefila. Because there was no tefila, there's no formalized tefila. You know, um, it was done in connection in conjunction with korbanos. It was after the tamid shachar. You know, um, so so I just why would you think you would put this with hilos tefila, even though we haven't read the halachos yet? So simple as an explanation is that's when you do it, right? You do it in uh, in we'll see in the first halacha. We'll, you know, you do it with with the uh, uh, three of the tefilos. Yeah. Well, that was the case. Why not? So like, why not have a separate section right next to it, like a Shema? Yeah, right, right. I mean, it, the, the nature of the mitzvah is entirely different. It's not on all of uh, Kla Yisrael, you know. So the, the real question is not why does he include it with tefillah. The question is why doesn't he have it as a separate section, especially given that it's like not even, you know, it's for Kohanim, you know. It predates tefillah. Yeah. yeah, right. Okay, so just have, we'll have that in mind. Uh, and then in the Minyan of Mitzvah, so let's see where he puts it. So you've got, um, just to go through the order really quickly here, I'll just look at it here. So the first, um, you have Anochi, Yichud Hashem, Avas Hashem, Yeres Hashem, Tefillah, L'davka bo, L'hishavea bishmo, L'hidamas bidracham hatomim vayusharim, L'kadesh shimo. So I would say, I mean, you could divide this in different ways. I would say these nine are all like Yesodeh HaTorah, Related, 
Okay. Um, most of them are, well, not most, yeah, most of them are in actual Sefer Hamada. Okay. The only exceptions are Lishavea Bishmo, which is in Sefer Hafla'a, because structurally that is more, um, you know, it belongs with the, the Nadarim stuff. But conceptually, the Ram says that it's tied to Yiras Hashem. Okay. So it makes sense it's there. And then, uh, uh, and then you know, you have Ladav Gabo, which is in um, Hills, uh, Deos. Right. And then you have um Lee Damas Bidraka, which is also Hilas Deos, but these are all like broadly speaking Yisodea Torah. Okay, then you get Kriya Shema, which arguably is also Yisodea Torah because it is uh Kabbalah's Omahu Shemaim. And the only reason I'm including it in that grouping is because next he says Lil Motor Ulamda, which is also Yisodea Torah related, and then he gets into safer Ava ones like Tfilin, Shell Rosh, Tfilin, Shell Yad, Tsitis, Mezuzah. Hakel, Hakel is a weird one, right? Yeah. Because he puts that in Chagiga, that has to do with like replicating Har Sinai, you know, it's a mitzvah for Malachim, you know, so it's a little strange. Uh, and then Lichtov Ko'ish Sefer Torah La'atzmo, that's in Sefer Ava. Lichtov HaMelech Sefer Torah La'atzmo, Yeser Al Ha'achad Shal Kol Adam. Okay, so a little hard press to explain why it's there. Then the last one in this cluster is Levarach Achar Amazon, and that's in Sefer Ava. So the first 19 are all Ahava Yesodeh Torah type mitzvahs. Okay. Then he switches to Mikdash, and it's not just Mikdash, it's Mikdash um, starting like Mikdash of Dinbo. So he has uh, Livnos Beis HaBechira, that's building the base of Mikdash, Liyurami Baizet, to have Moraha Mikdash, 22 Lishmor Baizet, Tommy, to guard the Mikdash constantly, that's Levim, 23 Lios Halevi Ovid the Mikdash, that the Levi should serve in the Mikdash, um, that's doing the guardianship role and the music role. 24, Lakadish Kuhanim Yadav Ragla Bishas Havoda, that the coin sanctifies his hands and feet at the time of Havoda. 25, Larov Neros with Mikdash, that has to do with the bias to uh, have uh, Neros in the Mikdash. Then we have our mitzvah, Lavarath Hakohanim Es Israel, he does not mention every day here, which is also interesting. Um, then Lahazdir Lechem Ulavona Lifne Hashem Bechol Shabbos, to arrange the Lechem and Lavona uh, 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 before Hashem every Shabbos. Lahakir Katoris Pamayim Bayom, to offer Katoris. Uh, uh, twice a day. Larosh ish be mizbeach ha'ola tamid, to have a constant fire burning on the mizbeach ha'ola. Laharim hadeshim me'al mizbeach b'chol yom, to remove the the, the uh, ashes from the mizbeach every day. Uh, I'm not going on forever, by the way. I just want to see when the next sure. thing comes. Um, uh, then a couple other Kohanim things, you know. So it is interesting. He does not put this with tefillah stuff. He puts it in mikdash stuff. Puts it seemingly in like daily mikdash operational things, you know. Because he hasn't even gotten to korbanos yet. Korbanos really begin with uh, he has more Kohanim stuff, and then korbanos he really starts off in lamid tes is tamid mincha, and then the musafim, and then korban pesach, and then like uh, other stuff, you know. So it is more like daily operation of Mikdash stuff. Yeah. So if we could figure that out, that'd be good. But for now, I just wanted to like note where, where it is. Okay. Okay. So let's get into the halachas now. Okay. So we are in Hill's Tfila, uh, Ubirkas Kohanim, chapter 14. Okay. So the Shachris, Bamusa, Uvani Ila. Now that's already an interesting way to start. Because like I said, Birgas Konin predates Tfila, you know, uh, Durbana, right? So he does not present this in a pristine form. He presents this in like a, how we encounter the mitzvah form, you know? He doesn't even start off mitzvah levarach hakonam, hakonam is Yisrael, shnemar kus varach es Yisrael, right? He starts it off like procedurally, you know? So that lends support to the theory that he includes in Hilos Tfila because it's part of the Seder HaTfila, you know? Like functionally, that's where it is. Uh, I don't know why he has to do that, but but you know, sounds like it. Right. So Shachris and Musaf and Anila, the Kohanim, uh, raise their hands. It, okay, I, I have not been in yeshiva outside of yeshiva uh, for Yom Kippur for so long. I know we do Birkas Kohanim at Neila. Is that a thing that the Olam doesn't do, or that they only do it, but they're not mocked to do it before Shkia? I Okay, I get that impression also. Yeah, yeah, interesting. Okay. Me and I don't remember that. Uh huh. Right. 
Okay, so Shafri's Musaf and Elif, those three. Okay, so they they do uh, this climb. That's already weird, also, because we the only thing we've seen about this mitzvah is it's b'chol yom, and now we're seeing, you know, that there are certain days where you're going to do it three times, right? Seemingly, right? I mean, obviously, most days you're going to do it only at Shafri's, on Shabbos and Yom Tov and Rosh Chodesh you can do it at Musaf, and then only only on Yom Kippur you're going to do it in Elif. Yeah, so, sounds like or Tanya Tibor. Sounds like it's even b'chol yom, so just never you. Basically, whatever you can, it just so happens most days you can't do Mincha and Mariv. Uh, yeah, so he's going to address Mincha and Mariv now. He's going to, because it's, it's actually going to sound different. He's going to sound like Yeah, let's, let's read what he says about Mincha. Uh, he says, um, Aval ba Mincha, Nesias Kapayim, Mipnesha ba Mincha, Kvar Sadu Kola Am. So at Mincha, there is no Nesias Kapayim because at, by Mincha, most of the people have had their meal. Okay. Um, the uh, Shema Shasui Hakohanim Yain, Shasui Hakohanim Yain. Maybe the Kohanim drank wine. And um, Rav Mapili fills in the factual uh, thing here. Uh, so they drank wine for like digestion aid, which I, which I never got. Like, you know, especially they're, yeah, I, 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 don't, I, I just never understood, like, factually speaking, what did they believe was happening, you know? But they, they mentioned that a lot. I mean, I, it's mentioned a lot in halacha, right? Like about uh, yain like, lachar So, like, what's the problem with that directly? I assume it would be like, uh, so like a lot of the pagan Muslim was just based around the reality of the you know, Iran, maybe more or less. So this is the halacha. No, but I'm I'm saying that that the uh, my question is more of a question on not even halacha, just like why did they think that wine helped the digestion, like. Experientially, that doesn't jive with. <laughs> I know. I know our wine is different, also than theirs was. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So anyway, so maybe the con drank the shikur aser benesias kapayim, and it's aser for shikur to do nesias kapayim. Again, very weird presentation here because he doesn't even end up getting to that halacha of shisui yain until next parak. You know, vaafilu um, biyom. Oh, so by the way, so it sounds like. What does it sound like? The uh, um, what can we infer from, uh, or, sorry. I was going to say, it, it sounds like there's no Chibamara at all. Yeah, so it sounds like there's no Chibamara, which makes sense because Mara was Rishus, right? But what it also sounds like, to me at least, is that they really would have done it at Mincha, but it sounds like a Gezerra that they that they didn't do it at Mincha, or maybe not Gezerra, but that, that they made a decision that this was not be done at Mincha just because of the, the Cheshash of Shekros. Uh, mm-hmm. Oh, you're right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, correct. So, so the question is, well, why don't you do it on a tainus at mincha, like on Yom Kippurim? Because uh, they made a gazera of a mincha of tainus because of mincha before Yom, so that they don't get it mixed up. Yeah, so it sounds like Midor Raisa, you really would do it at every tefillah, right? Um, oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, at every chova, tefillah's chova. Right. Yeah. So, so what, what I'm wondering now is like, okay, and this is just total speculation on my part, but the mitzvah of tefillah mido uh, raisa is lavod hashem betfila b'chol yom. Right. You do avoda betfila b'chol yom, and then mido rabbanan mido resofrim they made tefila into shacharis and and mincha and then mariv as rishus and then musaf and ilah. Right. So perhaps they did a similar thing with with uh, nisius kapayim that you do you do nisius kapayim at every daily avoda. And once they made daily avoda shabalevs into shachers and mincha and musa nila, they just attached this to the avoda, you know, to the daily avoda. Because otherwise, why are they like? We know historically why they had to make tefillah, um, you know, uh, uh, change the structure of tefillah because people couldn't say the right language and people lost the ability to praise God. There's no reason ostensibly why they needed to make birgas konim multiple times a day. So that's why I'm trying to like find an in here that maybe. There is an idea that, like, whenever you do an avoda, uh, avoda Hashem, then you. When, yeah, he does. Yeah. So you'll see that they didn't. Yeah, they didn't. Yeah, yeah. That, 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 I'm, I, I'm kind of jumping the gun here. Yeah. I will right, we'll read it in a few halakos. Okay. But made of Murim. When do we say that, um, that what, that, 
they don't do it at Mincha. That's Batanya Shemis Palalimbo Mincha Uni'ila. That's at a, so wait now, am I getting the wrong about me tomorrow morning? Batanya Shemis Palalimbo Mincha Uni'ila, Kagon Son Kibor Batanya Sibor. About Tanya Shemimbo Uni'ila, Kagon Tishbaav, Bashiva Asar Batamus, Hoyle Utfilas Mincha Shalahem Samuk Lashkias Hama, Parizon Nikras Kini'ila, Beino Mishalafas Bimincha Shalahoyom, Lufika Yesh Banasis Kwan. Okay, so the Bami Nurim morning is when do we not do it? at Mincha because of the chances of Shikrus, that's only on a Tainus. Sorry, did I get it wrong again? When no. do we... Wait, when do we say that you don't say you don't do the thing at Mincha? Mm -hmm. uh, only at a Tainus when you often say it in Correct, yeah. But when you don't say it in Mincha, Right, like in a Tanis Tishbaav or a Shivas of Tammuz. So then no one's going to mix it up with Mincha Bukhul Yom, right? Because I guess Mincha Bukhul Yom they would do earlier. That's the assumption, right? And that follows from the Gazera also, that I guess they do it after lunch, right? Okay, so don't you it sounds like it, right? Because you use the word Shema, right? Let's finish reading the halakha because it's going to give us a little bit more data. So, so uh, I didn't translate this. Since Tefillah's Mincha on those days, meaning like on Tishbab and Shiva or Thomas, is close to Shkia. It is it hari zo nearest kniila. It looks like kniila. Ve'ino mischalaf is b'mincha shel folion, and it will not get mixed up with mincha on every day. Ulafikach, and therefore yesh ba nesias kapayim. There is nesias kapayim. The kovin she avar va'ala leduchan b'mincha shel yom kipurim. It's funny he says kovin she avar, right? Avar is a gazera, I guess. A coin who violates the gazera and ascends to the duchan at mincha on yom kipurim. Since it is known that there's no shikras in Yom Kippurim, then he, he may proceed with his Nesiyas Kapayim and we don't uh, like take him down. I don't mean like tackle him. I mean like, like you know, uh, uh, bring him down off the Duchan. Because of Chashad, the people will say that he was puzzle as a Kohen and therefore they brought him down. When they become the talk of the town. Yeah, so Chaim, your question is, what's the structure of the Gezerah, right? Yeah. So it sounds like, I'm going to say it the way that I'm thinking it, but then feel free to like correct me. So it sounds like the, the primary Gezerah is we don't want Kohanim doing Nesiz Kapayim drunk. And since people drink in the afternoon, we say there's a Gezerah, it's usher to do Nesiz Kapayim at Mincha B'choya. That's step one, right? I, what about uh, on a Tainus? So we say the gazera is like a low plug, right? That on a, a, a mincha of a tainus, then we also don't do it because we don't want people to get mixed up. Okay, but it sounds like the initial gazera was only on regular minchas. But minchas that are at the end of the day, which apparently the only time they would do that is on a tainus seaboard that doesn't have meila. So then the gazera was never on that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sounds like on an early mincha, you know, right. on a mincha that's not samuk lishkia. Yeah, it's a good question. Meaning, how was the gazera structured like to go based on when people are no to daven mincha, or is there like? Is there like an objective reality to mincha that's samuk lishkia that's near kaniila? Like he speaks of near kaniila as like a thing, you know? Yeah, yeah Yosef. Sure. Well, was the, the, depending on how you read a particular, a particularly confusing gemara, you could you could say that it's also to eat. I think like after after chutzos or after either after chutzos or after started the time of mincha until you done mincha, which I believe the Romans on the one locker side of that one. Mm. Uh -huh. Yeah, I'm pretty sure the Ramam has an exception if you have an exception. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I, I, you're allowed to eat before you have an Let's just look up the Ramam since this is Ramam Kiyos <laughs> as well. Well, you don't do Ramam. We've done it a couple times. All right. Um, say for Ahava. Uh, 
uh, Tefila Birgosponim, uh, Samuch, Lamincha. Um, yeah, so this is in Vav Dalad, I believe. Yeah. Asur Laadam, Sheyitom Klum Oshiyasim Malacha, Meachar Sheyala Amur Shafar, Achis Pal Tefilas Shafaris. Okay, so this is, I know, starting with Shafaris, but he's saying it's Asur for a person to taste anything or to do Malacha once dawn, once it's been dawn, uh, uh, the, the, whatever the first rays of dawn until he davens chakras. Bechin, similarly, lo yashkim le pesach havera lishol bishlamo can't get up early to greet your friend uh, at his door. Kodem shi ispala tefilas chakras before he davens chakras. Velo yite le derech kodem shi ispala. He shouldn't go out on the path before he davens. Unclear is that chakras? Because the first two times he said she ispala tefilas chakras. Here he's just saying kodem shi ispala. Of al toim hu v'osem malacha kodem musaf. You may taste and do malacha before Musaf, um, and before Mincha, but you're not allowed to be soed uh, close to Mincha, right? So first of all, this is soed, not toim. Mm, okay. Uh, yeah, I'm just, I'm just mentioning that. And, uh, and also, he hasn't yet defined uh, which Mincha we're talking about, right? He didn't say tefilas Mincha, but... Okay, Kevin Shi Gia's Van Mincha Gadola. Once the time Mincha Gadola arrives, which is six and a half Shaos Manios after the beginning, uh, after Hanit, Lo Yikanis Lamirchas. He may not go into a bathhouse, but Filu Lahazea, even to sweat uh, or to schwitz, as Jews say these days. Ah, she is Pala until he davens. Shema Yis Alev. Maybe he'll faint, he'll swoon. Vivata uh, Minat Fila, and he'll, uh, he'll uh, uh, abstain from Tfila. Yeah. Velo Lechel, he may not eat. Afilo achilas arai. Okay, so that's different lashon than soed, right? Soed would imply some sort of meal, right? It doesn't have to, but some sort of like substantial eating. But this is afilo achilas arai. Shemi yimashal achila. Maybe he'll continue on eating. Vlo ladun, and not to judge. Vafilo begamar din. Even the final verdict. Why? Shemi yisasir hadin. Maybe the din will be overturned or contradicted. I mean, vimashal vivatol vivatol minat fila, and he'll um, abstain from tefila. By the way, I, I made a mistake. The previous halacha was kodem mincha. This is now mishi hegiazman mincha. So kodem mincha, you're just not allowed to have a suuda. But once mincha the zman arrives, then you can't do any of these things. So there's two levels. Yeah. Right. The earlier one. The earlier one. Right. Um, the lo yeshev He also cannot sit in front of a barber. of afilat sports head yot. Even uh, 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 Yeshua Bass. I don't know if you would consider himself a, a head yoke, meaning a not. I don't think so either. I think he's professional, but I'm just saying, like, he, I think he's humble about it. Yeah. Um, Ajis Palel until he davens. Shema Yeshaber Hazug. Maybe, no, Zug here, I think, means uh, the cutting of the mint, right? Not, mm-hmm. not, the yeah, the scissors. Yeah, I guess because it's two pairs of blades, mm-hmm. right? That's why it's Zug. Veloy Khan is the Burski, some of Lamincha. I always think Burski is a Russian guy, but uh, uh, Burski is a tanning. So, uh, not tanning salon. <laughs> tanning salon is a different kind of thing. Uh, the tanning uh, uh, tannery. <laughs> tanning salon. You probably also can't go to the tanning salon. That's probably Dome la Yeah. Uh, you shouldn't go there anyway because of the dermatology issues. But um, okay, uh, you can't go into a tanning place uh, close to Mincha. Uh, so we switch. Oh, yeah, this is Samach la Mincha. Wait. Yeah, so this is switching back to Samach la Mincha. Um, Ad she is Paul until he davens. Shema yire hefsed b'malachto. Maybe he'll see a uh, some sort of like problem with his work. I guess it means the thing that he is getting. Um, th- th- this is not just for a person who's a tanner, right? I think this is a person. Who, well, either if you're a tanner or you are the guy who's having your your hides being tanned, you're going to see some problem. Vis asig ba and you'll be involved in it. Vis akimin tefila and that'll delay your tefila. Or you'll be with prevented from tefila. See, I don't know what the difference between this lashon is, by the way. Yivatal minat tefila versus yis akev minat tefila. Yeah. Is the case where if you're super stinky from tanning? You know? Yeah. So if you're an actual tanner, then you get really stinky, right? That's why I'm 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 not sure when he says this sounds like an actual tanner, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, uh, right. So meaning he, I guess, what happens is he has to like, but is he not tanning in the morning? Like, isn't he stinky from like morning work? I don't know. If you begin one of these tasks, lo yafsik, you may not interrupt, or you, you don't have to interrupt. Ela gomer, finish it. So it's only lachat that you can't do this, right? Yeah. So I guess 
um, we're worried. So going back to our halakha, I guess we're worried that people are either going to violate these halakhos, right? Or they'll start um, before Samach Lamincha and still be drunk. I don't know. Either way, I guess it was like, it was a chashash that people were, were drinking. I mean, regardless of what the halacha is, people do what they do. Kind of like how, um, you know what it reminds me of? It's not the same thing. You know how um, on, I think many shuls have a on minhag on Simchas Torah to do Birkas Kohanim at Shafris instead of at Musaf. That's just acknowledging the reality that a lot of people get drunk at Kiddush. You know, it's like they shifted it, right? That's what I've heard. Yeah. No, it's, it's open halacha, I think, right? That, an open halacha that, like, even by the time the Mechaber wrote the halachos, that people were getting drunk at a, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So. And, and that's, that's like, you know. I mean, I don't know if you're in the mind. What was that? Yeah, it's definitely true. Yeah, I don't know if you're in the mind. Right? Yeah, never been here for Zimbabwe. Sorry. Okay. Okay, fine. So, so, so that answers our question about the Xera, right? That the Xera was really a, just a, a, a normal, well, partially does, a normal mincha daven at normal mincha time, but then something that's samuch lishkia, categorically they exempted from this, and therefore you you do nisius kapayim uh, there at that mincha, right? Yeah, I mean, the only thing I'm makes me in doubt about that is does a davka have to be like uh, where it's stemming from the day? I know there's a kiyum of doing that, of uh, of like, uh, I love when he says it's near Kani'ila. Yeah, well, why do we do it on, well, let me see if he, if he brings it down. Is there a kiyum on, I don't know, what's your time Hold on just a second. Uh, let me just write that. Okay, and then let me just look at how I, I He might not bring it down. I know that's why we, Davin, uh, we we in Yeshiva, Davin, Mincha, on a tiny close to Shkia, because we say it's Kiyum Ni'ila, of like extra Tchino Bakasha, Kodam uh, uh, you know, this humatinus, but um, oh. wait, well, I'm in the wrong safer. It's supposed to be in Zmanim. Tinyos. No. Uh, Revia Hayoma Akrons. This is on a this is a 117. Okay, this is not necessarily like our Shivas of Tamos. Based in Vazakanim Yoshin Bevesak Nessus. So, based in, and I think things would go better if this were the case, or maybe much worse. Based in and the Zakanim sit in the base Knessus, Ubokim Al Maise Antre at year, and they evaluate the actions of the people in the city. Uh, from after Shachris until midday. They remove the stumbling blocks of Averos, I guess, from the city. And they, they uh, uh, warn and they inquire and, and interrogate the, the, the violent people and the um, people who do Averos and they separate them from them. The Al-Bali's Roa and um, I guess bullies, and they, they lower them. So they, they really go out and they like facilitate like public chuva from these uh, bad people. From uh, midday, this must mean until the Erev. Revia Hayom, oh no, yeah, until the Erev. Revia Hayom, so from a fourth of the day, I guess from like I guess the third quarter of the third quarter of the day, Korim be brachos uklolos of the Torah. They read from the brachos uklolos in the Torah. Shemar musar Hashem b'ni al timas al takotz b'tokavto. That's from Mishlei. As it says, the musar of Hashem, my son, do not despise and don't be disgusted with his rebuke. Maftirin benavi b'tokavos b'tokavos me'inyan atzara. And I always thought that this part was cool, right? Because we do 
maftir with Yeshayahu, but on the time of Tzibor, they would pick a tochacha from the Navi about that psara. So if it was a drought, they would pick a drought haftara. If it was like a uh, locust, they would pick a locust haftara. Ruvia hayom ha'achron, and then the last fourth of the day, mispalim mincha, mishchanunim, vezokim, mishvanim, kibikocham. Uh, they would daven mincha and supplicate and uh, cry out and do vidue according to their capacity. So that's one mention of mincha. So that sounds like a regular, um, what do you call, um, uh, a tiny steeper that there goes there. And he doesn't say it, looks like he doesn't say it for like a, um, a our, our tiny seaboard, but uh, seemingly it would still be a kiyom, yeah? Tiny seaboard was one of the things he was saying had an eel and therefore you don't do it. Uh, no, the tiny seaboard that there goes there, I don't think, or does it? Yeah. Uh -huh. Hold on just a second here. Um, yeah. Yeah, you're right. I think you're right. Hold on. Yeah. Uh, is from Minha and Ila. On some keyboard, but Tanya's keyboard. Right. Yeah. So there. You're going to be doing a ni'ila. It's funny you didn't mention ni'ila there, right? I mean, in Hebel's tiny house, but I guess you you fit in mincha and ni'ila close to the end. So I guess you, you still fit in mincha at the last fourth of the day. Strange. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. So I, I guess we don't have an answer. We don't have an answer to your question <laughs> about what if we dive mincha late, uh, you know, now. Yeah. I'm not sure. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm going to say. Mm -hmm. You don't understand how you get out of what? No, I'm um, um, saying that I'm on um, on right, So hold on, let me just get the facts again here. So on Tinus of Tishra, oh, really okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay, I'm thinking about when people are probably having when they're having men are in Omaha. You're telling me when? Not in men are earlier. Earlier, okay. Right. So should we do Nisius Kapayim? So, yeah. right. So the question is, do we do Nisius Kapayim uh, because it's Tishbab and categorically we say that, you know, that, that, there's, that there's no hashash that you're going to mix it up or do we say that you do it you don't do Tennessee's client because you're diving in at a normal time and therefore you might mix it up. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true. No, I, no, well, we, we don't do Nisi's client. We, we read uh, because calling him in the Tefillah, right? But yeah, I mean, I, I, well, yeah. yeah, 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 right. Yeah. So the same time, I, I, yeah. I feel like at the higher level, it will cause confusion to, to mix things up. So, Love Dafka. Right, but the question is what Chaim is asking, how do they structure the Gezerah? You know? Yeah. Yeah, I don't I, I don't know. Yeah. I guess we can, I mean, if I, I wasn't thinking about Israel. I guess we could ask people what they do in Israel, right? It might be, you know, there's I don't know what I did in Israel all the time. I don't know how Right, meaning the, mm -hmm. they did because Connie even though they did it early. Right, all right, makes sense. Yeah, I mean, that follows the minhag of how we do it. Yeah, right, yeah, okay, yeah, good question. I don't know what Ellen right, right, the uh, uh, yeah, okay, so let, now let's get to the uh, the procedure, okay? So he's going to do in Gvulin yeah, outside of Mikdash and then in Mikdash. Ketad he nasis kapayim bagvulin. How do we do nasis kapayim in in uh, outside of Mikdash? Once the Shlikh Sibor reaches uh, Ritze, Kishiyomar Ritze, when he says the word Ritze, all of the Kohanim that are in the base Knesses leave their places, and they go up to the Dukhan. So right away you see here, um, this is, see, this is one of the, the things that I, I uh, you know, that differs from our experience, because what do our Kohanim do? Wait, how is that different? Slightly different, yeah. Start them early because they actually need time to do stuff. Uh, they leave earlier because they wash their hands, right? Oh. So he doesn't put that in the procedure here, right? He says they go for straight from their places up to the uh, to the duhan, you know. Well, we all have that one. We have that one. Uh, right, yeah, right, right. But I'm, yeah, I, I think though that the way people think of it, 
uh, people think of it as that that's part of the procedure, right? Oh. The going and washing their hands, right. you know? Um, so I, I'm just noting that this is, doesn't accord with it, with our exact practice. I want to like point out all those discrepancies. The Umdim Sham Pnein Lamuha Hefal, and they stand there with their faces towards the Hefal, which I assume the Hefal is the, the Aron, right? The Alcharehim Klape Ha'am, and their backs to the people. The Etzbosim Kufos Latoch Kapeim, their hand, their fingers are, are clenched in their fists, okay? Or on their palms. Aj Hiashlim Shlich Tibor Ha'odaya, until the Shlich Tibor finishes Modim. Um, they turn their faces towards the people and they spread their fingers uh, right so that's the other thing is that you know Ramam doesn't have any of this um, the uh, mm-hmm. the live long and prosper whatever thing he does like that that and then and they extend their hands uh, parallel to their shoulders right that's another thing that I've seen uh, I, again I, I don't know how we poskin but I know I've seen a lot of Kohanim lift their hands above their shoulders you know, which we're going to see that that's not how you're supposed to do it halakhically. Like, like if you just read here, you might just be saying, you might think he's just saying like, oh, that's how they do it. But it's not like you have to do it that way. But when we read the mikdash procedure, we'll see that they actually do have to lift their hands above their heads. Um, okay, so umaschilin um, yivrachacha, the beginning of yivrachacha. And uh, hold on just a second. Oh, let's look at this. Oh, you don't have. I forgot. Uh, let's look at uh, my makbili here. Machzim pneim, they turn their faces. Mifanim es pneim laachor laachor achre shibirchu al hamitzvah. Okay, so they turn their faces uh, back after they made the birchas mitzvah, which we'll read later on. Umutar lahafnos es hagav el sefer hatorah shabehechal kasher hu gvoa min hakarka asar tefachim ke eighty centimeters. The next shot because rishus nifradas. I mean, it's funny because the sefer torah is not like. Um, what do you call? Uh, it's not um, the the Aaron is not open. He, in other words, he's just telling how can you turn your back to the to the safer Torah in the Hay Hall. He's saying that it's because it's in its own rishus because it's eighty centimeters. Well, by Nila, maybe I don't know. I mean, I don't know if we have to open it for Nila, but it's certainly not a shop race. right? Yeah. Okay. Anyway, back to the Ramam. Um, then they start your bracha. So how so? So the shliach tibor like feeds them word for word, and they answer. As it says, say to them. So in other words, the bracha has to be in response to a saying to them. Until they be, they complete the first pasuk. Then everyone answers amen. Then he goes back and does the second pasuk word for word. Uh, and then they answer. Until they complete the second pasuk. And everyone answers amen. Same thing with the third pasuk. When they finish all three psukim, the shlich tibor begins the final bracha of tefillah, shihi sim shalom, which is sim shalom. Then the kohanim turn their faces um, towards the kodesh, right? It's funny he calls it klapia kodesh here, right? Not klapia heichal. And then they retract their fingers, <laughs> okay? Okay. Uh, um, and then they stand there on the Dukhan until the bracha is complete, and then they go back to their place. So that's the procedure. Okay, now here's how regimented it is. The, the one who calls Kohanim is not permitted to call them until Amin is finished from the Tibor. The Kohanim can't start the bracha until the statement finishes from the mouth of the Makre. And the Tibor cannot answer Amen until the Bracha finishes from the Kohanim, which I I feel like every time I've seen this in a lot of shuls, there are people who like answer Amen prematurely, but you know, this is a strict law here. Kohanim can't start the next Bracha until they hear Amen from the mouth of the Tibor. The Shliach Tibor cannot answer Amen like the rest of the nation, because maybe he'll get distracted. And he won't know which bracha he's uh, reading to that practical concern. Because they, they, uh, uh, they, what do you call? Um, yeah, why just I guess because you're in the middle, right? You, you space out, right? I guess you're going to know the first one. Okay, fine. 
So the Kalim can't turn their faces from the Tibur until uh, uh, the Shleach Tibur begins Sim Shalom. The Kalim can't uproot their feet from their places until the Shleach Tibur says, uh, complete Sim Shalom. They can't retract their fingers until their faces turn away from the Tibur. Okay, so the, the, that's, I, I never, you know, this is kind of impossible for us to tell whether the Kohanim actually do this. Got to like in, 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 interview some Kohanim. Like, you could easily see Kohanim as thinking that there's no halachas about retracting your fingers, you know. Um, uh, I don't know, actually. Yeah, I'm not sure. Um, uh, so it was a ton of Rabbi Yochanan that the Kohanim should not ascend to the Dukhan with their shoes on because me, uh, but rather they should um, stand barefoot. Yeah, so what's the reason for the Takana? So Rav Magbili supplies this to us. He says, This is a weird one. Shema Tikre Rutsuas Sandalo, Latakna. Maybe his shoe will come untied, basically, right? And he'll fix it. These Ake Bilalos the Dukhan, and then he'll he'll be late going up to the Dukhan, Biomru Ish Mipne Pagam Bakunasa. And then rumors will start that maybe he has got a Pagam in his Kahuna. Kahunchu Ben Grusha, Ben Chalutza, Shainu Rai Lases as Kapav. I we're talking about this when uh, we're talking about. Now, like, the Ake Hat is part of that. Oh, what do you mean? Oh, right. But everyone's delayed at the same pace, though. Uh, not really. I guess it depends on what your shoes. Yeah. That's true. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. But this is an example of what I mentioned before when we were talking about how you get put in Nidu if you call someone an Ebed, that people were very mopped on Yichus, that any little thing that questions your Yichus was a big deal to the point where he's like actually being masaking that like maybe your shoe will break and that's going to like like put your Yichus into question. Yeah, it's uh, it's interesting. I wonder if I have something to do with like Mikdash. But this is not in Mikdash, though. No, uh, okay. I mean, we're going to like... When was Rabbi, Rabbi Yochanan? Exactly he was he in, got, tail into Mikdash, right? I know he was the Tolly Rabbi Akiva, but it was mostly after Mikdash. I think Rabbi Yochanan was Zakha's over Rabbi Akiva's Talmudo. Rabbi Akiva was mostly after the Mikdash. First century CE. Uh, second temple. Um, okay, it's Dukim stuff. Okay, fine. So it's possible that this is connected to Mikdash. Mm. Uh, Late Takana. Not. Nah. Yeah. Uh, okay, well, let's do this one more. Kishi Yuha Kwan and Yeah. Okay. Wait, I don't think it could be, I don't think it can be Mikdash because I don't, you're not allowed to have shoes in the Mikdash anyway. Oh, my point. Oh. Oh, sorry. Post Mikdash. You're right. The Kwanim are, are barefoot in Mikdash. No, that was my point. That's what I meant. Right. That only started after Mikdash. Well, I'm saying that that is like. So that's what I thought also. I, I thought that it was like a Zikr the Mikdash type thing or or like, you know. Yeah, that's what I was Yeah, that's yeah, right. right. Not like not like what he said. Yeah, right, right. Yeah, right. But what I'm saying is that if the real time of the Tkana was because of the shoe breaking thing, that had to have started after Mikdash. Because in Mikdash, their shoes are already going to be off. Yeah. Why don't that start from Mikdash? I don't think because Rikas Kohen ever restricted just in Mikdash. I th- wasn't it always everywhere? Oh, that's true. Also, yeah, it was always everywhere. Yeah, yeah. I don't know them. <laughs> okay, let's read this one last halacha uh, before we do. We'll save the mikdash stuff for tomorrow. Uh, oh, so this is the famous one about um, you know looking at the kohanim, right? So when the kohanim are blessing the people, they should not look at the people uh, so as to not distract their minds. I think that's you have to read the vav as a uh, today. Their eyes should be towards the ground like someone who's standing in tefillah. No person is, is permitted to look at, to gaze at the faces of the Kohanim at a time when they bless so that his mind should not be distracted. 
Kol ha'am miskavim lishmo ha'bracha. Rather, everyone should focus on hearing the bracha. Umachavim pneim kenega pnei kohanim, and make their have their faces face towards the kohanim. Me'inam abitim mepneim, and not look at their faces. Right. So, this, so that's what I was wondering. Right. So this might be an example of a place where the Rambam demystified the reason of the Gemara, because the Gemara, I, I want to look up and oh, make sure it's a real Gemara. It's actually in the Gemara. So here's what the Gemara uh, says. I, I figured I'd show it to you. Yeah, Giga 16a. Um, so it says, so. yeah. Um, hold on. Yeah, uh, it says, Darash Rabbi Yehuda Rabbi Nachmini Mitrugamane Deresh Lakish. So here's the drasha. Kol hamis taka begimot varim enav kehos. Anyone who gazes upon three things, his eyes will grow dim, which means he'll go blind, right? Bekeshet uvanasi uvakohanim. Okay, so at the rainbow, at the nasi, and at the kohanim, and you're gonna see that this is qualified here. Okay, bekeshet dixiv as so you can't stare at the rainbow as it says. Kamari hakeshes asher yihib anan biyom hageshem hu kamari dumus kavod hashem. Like the appearance of the rainbow that is in the cloud on a rainy day. That, that's the appearance of the likeness of the Kavod Hashem. Okay, Yechazkal, whatever that is. Okay, leave that, leave that in Yechazkal. Uvanasi, Dixiv, and the, with the Nasi, it says, people do say this. People, you know, people misquote this also. They say, I heard it's usher to look at a rainbow. And I would say, what do you mean it's usher to look at a rainbow? There's a Brahe saying a rainbow. It's usher to stare at a rainbow. You know, and then oh, oh yeah, it's, uh, I, I heard it from my high school students all the time. At a rainbow uh like yeah you're right they don't that i don't hear them say they'll they just say you're you're not supposed to stare at a rainbow you know yeah um okay but then uh nasi which makes sense where we don't hear about that because we don't have a nasi deceive as it says i will give from your radiance upon him that's about the um is that by the oh this is oh this is our own succeeding uh elazar succeeding our own Right. Oh, no, no. This is Yoshua. Take Yoshua ben Nun, a man who has a spirit in him, and rest your hands on his head, on him. Uh, um, Give some of your hod upon him, Laman Yishmu Kol Adas Bnei Israel, so that everyone will hear. So I guess it's funny he's taking this as a nasi thing. Okay, fine. Okay, but then here's the last one, and you'll see that people still must quote this. So it's not just the kohanim when they're uh, when they're blessing the nation. It's dafka in mikdash when they're on the duchan and they're blessing Israel with shem hamaforash. And Rashi there says. What, what? Who cares? He says, "Shashchina shora al kishra etz bosen." The shchina is resting on their fingertips. So we still need to explain that. But you see that the common notion that you can't look at kohanim at all is not directly connected to the shchina thing. The shchina thing comes from the fact that using the shem on the forash, you know. But either way, the Rambam. I got to see if there's another source for that Rambam. Um, because uh, Ram makes it into an entirely practical thing and doesn't confine it to Mikdash. So there might be another Gemara here. Yeah. Yeah, yeah you look there, I'll look over here and then we'll stop for today. Uh, oh, I'm looking in the wrong place. Okay, you know, let, let's look at it tomorrow. Okay, lean out, yeah. Something Zohar, which I'm guessing. <laughs> yeah. Probably not. Where the Ramam 